Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Question. Can taking good care of your teeth prevent heart disease? Heart disease? Yeah. That's a good question. It is a good question. It's time for a Mayo Clinic expert's opinion on that. And joining us in studio is Mayo Clinic dentist and prosthodontist, Dr. Thomas Salinas. Welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. Prosthodontist. I'm surprised you did a good job pronouncing that. He's been on that. before. Well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what does a prosthodontist do? Prosthetics, uh, prosthetic dentistry, as it were, is uh, just one of 10 specialties in dentistry that deals with replacing of orificial structures. It could be teeth, it could be parts of the jaw, a number of other areas as well. So you do all those implants now. Does anybody get dentures anymore? People do. Uh, fortunately, in this country, that has gone down uh, as the way patients present with needing dentures, let's say, present edentulous without any teeth. That's becoming less of an incidence than it was maybe just even 10 to 15 years ago. It was an upwards of 20 plus percent. Uh, and in varying areas of the country, you'll find that that's different now. Overall, it's down to about 8 to 10 percent of what it was in comparison. Because of good dental care? Partly. I think people are becoming more innately aware of what that really means. Huh. People are living longer, keeping their teeth for a longer period of time. So, yes, that's exactly right. All right. So what is a dentist, what does your dental health have to do with your heart health? How are the two mixed? It's become really in, uh, more aware now if I, in our medical community. Uh, years ago, uh, the NIH, in conjunction with the dean of University of Southern California, Harold Slavkin, put out a paper that uh, connected the systemic nature of disease with oral health. And this became to light more in the years following that. And I think that some of the piloted studies that have been presented recently look at that. There's not really a, an implied nature of saying causation. In other words, having oral health or oral disease does not, does not really causative in the fact that, for instance, cardiovascular disease is probably one of the more common linked types of systemic diseases now. So that's really where we're at with it. We're looking more of a causation, and that's difficult to prove given the size of many of these studies that have become. So there's no concrete evidence of a relationship, or no concrete evidence that poor oral hygiene uh, causes heart disease? Not at this point. There's so many confounders. Some patients present with multiple diseases. They may have osteoporosis, diabetes, and all of these do have sort of a link to oral health. Because of many of our patients are becoming certainly older now in comparison to 25, 30 years ago, many of them have multi-system type disease, and it's hard to know exactly what causes what. So the causation really is not there, but the association is. And there was another uh, paper, another study that came out that, that showed that if you brushed your teeth three times a day, you were less likely to have heart failure and less likely to get atrial fibrillation, have atrial fibrillation, which is a common type of heart arrhythmia. That's correct. That study was put out recently. It drew a lot of attention, but I think there are some innate flaws with it. Number one, uh, a lot of these patients were self-reporting. And, you know, we all like to think that we have oral hygiene on a regular basis, and many of us do, of course, but uh, it's not as reliable as we think. First of all, it's quite different than we compare some of the other studies that have linked professional periodontal cleaning with cardiovascular disease. Mm. Those have interventions that are very different. Even one that linked diabetes and the effect of professional periodontal therapy with the uh, nature of diabetes. It's as effective as a triple drug regimen, actually. Hmm. So well, people with diabetes uh, benefit from having periodontal care? They but certainly do. Amazing. And it's, it's as effective as what? It's effective as even using a third drug. It, a uh, third drug to control blood sugar. That's correct. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I was going to just say it seems to me that if you're taking good care of your dental health, you'd be someone who takes good care of your physical health, but there's more to it than that. Certainly. And this was uh, the basically the cooperation between the American Academy of Periodontology and the European Federation of Periodontology back in 2017 that showed this uh, this finding. I thought I had heard a story a few years ago that if you flossed your teeth, it was good for your heart. Is it the same type of a link? <laughs> yeah, essentially. I mean, I think uh, we have to look at periodontal disease and how this is, it's, it's sort of a growth of bacteria within the mouth. It's a film on teeth. Certain areas between teeth 
can actually be depleted of oxygen. So it's not just the fact of removing bacteria through the physical act of flossing, but it's disturbing that anaerobic or without oxygen environment that tends to promote periodontal disease. That's one of the real reasons to, to floss. So if you have bacteria in your mouth because you haven't taken, obviously there are a lot of bacteria anyway, but if you lessen the number of bacteria in your mouth by brushing, flossing, et cetera, then you reduce the number of bacteria in your bloodstream, you reduce the inflammation in your bloodstream, which reduces your risk for heart disease, presumably. Is that the theory? That is the theory. And uh, there's, there's lots of levels to that. Uh, certainly, you, you actually increase the bacterial count in your bloodstream just by the nature of brushing and flossing your teeth as well. However, some of the pathogens we find that are commonly found in patients that have extensive periodontal disease. Pathogens meaning disease-causing bacteria. Correct. Mm -hmm. And some of these bacteria also are found in cholesterol-based plaques within the artery itself, have been found to be sort of a confounder in this type of of disease process. So it's not really clear if if it's a chicken or or an egg thing. Uh, What comes first? Is it a common finding in both disease states? Uh, and there are other diseases that may have this uh, this uh, effect as well by uh, just by nature of, of these types of bacteria. Another story I saw, and it said that tooth loss patterns are connected to coronary artery disease. Can you explain that? Yeah, this is, this is somewhat linked. Uh, so even though there is an association here, it doesn't seem to be causal. Again, it's, there's an association. It's a, it doesn't mean that there's a, a, a cause-effect type relationship with this, but there is an association. So patients that have advanced periodontal disease often have a loss of uh, tooth loss pattern that will predict in some way coronary artery disease. It's not well understood. Uh, Some of this is based on inflammation and the fact that some of the inflammatory markers seen with periodontal disease also are found with other disease states like diabetes. One happens to be coronary artery disease. Some of these pathogens also, just by nature of their involvement in the bloodstream, will actually elevate cholesterol. Hmm. And uh, so that's found as well. (laughs) So when you talk about a tooth loss pattern, what does that mean? I mean, what particular pattern would suggest you're more likely to get coronary artery disease? Yeah, certainly having a certain number of teeth that are lost within a given period of time. For instance, okay. the most common missing tooth in the adult population in the United States is the lower first molar. Why is that? Well, it's been there since you've been six years old. However, it's been subject to attack longer than any of the other teeth have been with regard to bacterial plaque, poor oral hygiene, etc. But the, the idea of seeing multi-rooted teeth being lost is somewhat of a sign of an advanced tooth loss pattern. All right, have you ever asked a dentist, okay, what do I really need to do to take good care of my teeth and gums? Standard suggestion, uh, this comes also from the NIH. It's looking at uh, seeing a, a professional every year, at least for an examination, a thorough examination that includes visual examination, prophylaxis cleaning, deep cleaning if it's appropriate, periodontal therapy if it's indicated. Uh, also looking at uh, Uh, x-rays as uh, a screening mechanism to detect caries and advanced bone loss patterns in uh, in many of the back caries or cavities so uh, once a year for x-rays once a year for x-rays in some patients we we might accelerate that based on the incidence of caries we're seeing lots of changes in caries these days i mean some of us know all the vaping that's gone on now and the controversies around that many of these vaping products hold sweeteners in them and actually increase the incidence of caries as well we're looking into that in our own patient population flossing flossing is uh, once is, a day enough is essential once a day is sufficient it it again disturbs that environment that bacteria tend to reproduce in all right and brush two to three times a day brushing <laughs> at least two times a day uh, three if it's possible is suggested to reduce the bacterial count as far right. as maintenance. Do you bring your toothbrush? <laughs> you know what? I've got some of those little ones that you can carry with you in your purse. Are those those wisps? Are those good enough? 
Oh, those are great. I'm excited. Uh, those are. <laughs> I can those hand are, them out when we're done here. Those are really great. I, I think it, you know, it gets people into the cognizant habit yep. of of regular oral care each day. Excellent. So, yeah, those are great. All right. Well, taking good care of your teeth and gums is a good idea. We know that gum disease is associated with an increased risk of heart disease. Maybe not cause and effect, but there is a relationship there. there Brush two to three times a day. Floss. See your dentist regularly and get some X-rays. Excellent. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic Dentist and Prosthodontist, Dr. Thomas Salinas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Salinas.